Right. Um, I wasn't initially planning on doing much about this, but it's something that's just come to light over the last month or so, is we've got money scattered all over the world. Um, normally, what this, you wouldn't consider this to be a problem, but apparently it is starting to be worrisome just how much money we have, and we're not doing anything useful with it. We've got money with SPI, obviously. We've got money with FFIS in Germany. We've got money in multiple different Debian foo countries around the world, where foo is at least UK, Switzerland, France, Brazil, Argentina. No, not Argentina. There's, there's probably more that I don't know about. But we've got lots and lots of money scattered around the world that we should really be doing something with. This is going to be a quick talk from me because I want lots of ideas from you lot. So, how much money have we got? A, a lot. I'm not going to try and do the Dr. Evil thing and say $100,000, but we've got a lot of money. So, what do we do with it? I reckon Luke and I should get a really nice holiday out of it. <laughs> right, we can do other things. Hardware. Um, we do have some ideas from the DSA team that they want um, bits and pieces of kit scattered around. The big thing with hardware is the vast majority of what we need, we get donated already. Um, if we go out and start buying large lumps of hardware, the chances are that'll just annoy the people who are happily giving, us the, giving it to us already. Um, it's often better for those companies to give us equipment rather than money. It works out easier for them for tax and all that kind of stuff. Um, to, related to that, we've also had suggestions of, well, we could start paying for hosting. I, I already shouted at the person who suggested that because that would be a really bad plan, I think, in the $100,000 for the amount of data we shift would be gone overnight. Um, and again, once people get the idea that we might be able to consider paying for the hosting we've got, why would they give it to us? I mean, feel free to argue if you think I'm wrong on any of these. I've had suggestions of marketing. Um, th there's a suggestion that we should, should possibly pay for a full page ad in one of the national papers in the US or the UK or Germany or somewhere. Um, I don't know how much that costs. Anybody have any ideas? Sorry? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, Mike? I was kind of thinking more in the line of targeted marketing in countries... Hello? There's no, Mike. Try again. I was thinking about more targeted, targeting the marketing to less developed areas where God forbid, Windows isn't um, so much of a stranglehold on the marketplace. Let's face it, mm. anybody who already knows what Linux is will go and download it um, and has a choice. Let's, let's look at places where the choice is a bit more limited. Okay, that's an idea. Um, I've even had it suggested that, I, mean, I know this has come up in the past, um, that we should even maybe hire somebody part-time to do the marketing bits that, frankly, most of our engineers, most of our developers, are not going to do. I don't know if people have thoughts on that. Um, I will say, at least while I'm DPL, we're not going to do a dun another dunk tank. You can quote me on that if you want. The, ama um, the amount of bad feeling that caused means... I, I may, I'm, I, please tell me I don't look that stupid that I think that would be a good idea. Um, I've also heard a couple of suggestions that, frankly, if we can't find something to do with the money, we should give it away to other organizations who might use it. That bothers me as well. Um, I mean, there's a bit, been a suggestion that we should give it to maybe, to, there's a, a group in the UK who um, do evaluations of operating systems, computer kit and whatever, and we could basically pay them to test and evaluate Debian so it meets their needs, and then more of the non-profit groups might, might start using us. I'm not convinced. Zach? Well, I don't know the aggregate data for this DebConf, but various individual people with whom I had spoken during this DebConf have received half of what they asked to be sponsored to come here. So 
given that we have that much money, given mm. that in the past we already used money to sponsor people, I wonder why we don't sponsor the entire request, maybe putting a boundary on the maximum according yeah. to a counter or whatever. Okay. Bridel? I was going to say that while I would not be very enthusiastic about giving the money to other organizations to do work that's you know not already sort of well aligned with Debian, there are some interesting projects out there mm -hmm. that other worthy sort of nonprofit organizations in and around the free software world are pursuing that it might you know where Debian is already a component of the solution they're working on. Where I think it could potentially make sense for us to um, decide that that's something we'd like to be a more active partner or participant in, mm -hmm. where the the action could be that we agree to put some money on the table. But um, to me, the while the some while some of those are actually fairly attractive things for us to consider, they are substantially less attractive to me than finding things that would you know, very directly impact the project. Yeah, absolutely. That that's my own thoughts as well. I know Peta suggested the um, the people working on some free Flash implementation. Or is, it the, is it the Gnash? Or is Peta here? Yeah. Is it, is it Gnash? I can't remember. What? Yeah. Um, and so suggested we may we may possibly want to help sponsor those guys. Um, so at the at the danger of potential conflict of interest, because I'm a member of the board of directors, uh, mm -hmm. the Open Media Now Foundation is pursuing, you know, um, uh, efforts to to build open implementations of media codecs. That's mm -hmm. something that is sort of another big frontier for people trying to build yeah. client things. Um, I'm aware of the new Project Kawa stuff that that Mad Dog and Linux International are engaged in in Brazil. Um, we've been following the saga of the Open Moco stuff as it transitions to a more community-oriented process, and, and again, John's been helping to try and find some manufacturing assistance for that in Brazil and things like this. There, there are a whole bunch of interesting opportunities out there if we really get stuck. But mm. to me, that's sort of a second tier of thing we ought to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. If we give up. Yeah, I mean, my own feelings on this. I mean, it, this isn't going to come down to necessarily my decision. If we do have really good ideas along that along that front, and we can't come up with anything else, I'm not going to say no. You know, I, I can be talked into anything here, probably. <laughs> um, but I, I'm very much reticent to the idea that the money that's been donated to directly to Debian, we should then pass on somewhere else. If if that if the donors wanted to give it to wanted those people to have the money in the first place, they could have done it directly. Um, Exactly, yeah. Did I go on? No. Um, Steve. So I wanted to echo Zach's comment about DevConf sponsorship because, because it does seem like yes. um, sponsorship for this conference is a constant struggle every year. There's always so much uncertainty about whether mm. we're going to be able to sponsor people. It becomes more expensive to sponsor each individual the longer that drags on the, the uncertainty and not being able to commit to, 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 to give yeah. the actual attendees a, a, a solid yes. Sure. And so plane ticket fares go up and everything else. Mm. And I, I really wonder why we aren't already doing that First of all, that's a very good question, and the answer is that, I mean, it was a little bit too late for us, for us to make much of an impact this year. Um, I did authorize that, that Debian would throw $20,000 into DebConf funds to make sure that we didn't have any panics about paying bills and things, and to make sure that we got at least the first lump of the travel sponsorship covered for quite a long while, I mean, I'm the sponsorship team lead as well for DebConf, for quite a long while it looked like we were not going to have enough money for any travel sponsorship. Thankfully, in the last couple of months, we've had a lot more sponsors come through, and that money, if anything, is looking surplus. We've managed a bit to cover, frankly, anyone who asked for sponsorship and was had the patience to wait long enough, unless we thought that they were, uh, that they were asking for sponsorship and they just didn't deserve it we gave everybody sponsorship. Um, there might be some people around who disagree with how we did things. For ex exactly that reason, I want to make sure that some of the surplus that we have from this year will be available right from the beginning of planning for DebConf next year so we don't have to do the same thing again. 
Sorry, was there a, was there a second part to, to what you're going to say, Steve? Um, we'll take. Mm. <laughs> Just that obviously, you know, when we start talking about trying to get 300 developers to a conference, $100,000 is not all that much when, sure. you, when you get right down to it, and we can burn through that rather fast. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's going to be a sustainable ongoing thing, but if we're saying we've got too much money in the bank, mm. well, this is a way to burn through it that's not going to screw us over in terms of you know, offending um, bandwidth or yeah, hardware exactly. sponsors and as well. And in terms of ongoing commitments, we can afford to do it for a few years without having to panic. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, given a lot more money, then I would say we, we will be able to do a lot more with DevConf. I don't want to commit to a huge amount. One other thought I wanted to put on the table, which came up during the um, SPI buff, and we were talking about this the other day, but just for the benefit of those here who might not have been there, um, you know, this amount of money is not enough for us to mount any significant legal defense for any challenge that might be brought against Debian in any sort of first tier jurisdiction in the world. On the other hand, we don't currently have any, you know, sort of looming threats on the horizon. And so I'm not particularly hung up about that. That's one of the things in the past that we've used as a justification for just banking some of the money for a while. The second observation that I made the other evening is that um, the money that Debian currently has is largely the result of accumulating donations mm -hmm. that were not actively solicited. To the best of my knowledge, certainly, you know, in terms of what SPI is holding, with the exception of things like sponsorship for, for DebConf, Debian has never actually asked anybody actively mm -hmm. to donate money. So the sense I have is if we find some reasonable ways to put some money to work, and we use it up, and we have some reason to need more or to productively make use of more. Um, if we ever actually did ask for donations, the chances are it chances would start are get more in. than we've already been getting. So, yes, I think that's the main point I want to make. Uh, basically, the money of Debian should actually be spent in a way that will improve the Debian project, like improve mm. the free software world. Yeah. And your point about if they wanted it to go to somewhere else, they would actually send them somewhere else. It doesn't work that way. People would like us to decide what actually makes more sense for us mm. for Im to improve the Debian distribution. And the Gnash thing is one thing I believe is very sure. important for the desktop and the Linux <coughs> uh, penetration uh, in desktop tops because it is the current Achilles heel of the free desktop. If you don't have a working Flash mm. implementation, they have to install the Adobe Flash to get a lot of web pages working. Uh, and $100,000 is not a lot of money. I just mm -hmm. did some calculations, and the School Linux Debian EDU project, we've spent 550,000 euros so far uh, building the uh, system, and we have spent them on things that are hard to get volunteers to do and also mm. things projects uh, that are important to us and we've spent them on developer gatherings and some things that are hard for volunteers to do in their spare time is contacting journalists in their work hours and to actually be able to get press coverage you have yeah. to contact journalists while they are still at work you can't call them in the evenings because it doesn't mm. work that way uh, we've spent it on uh, on marketing we've spent it on uh, walking around in schools and getting to know the teachers and the admins there. They also, you can't call them in the evening. It doesn't work that way. Mm. Uh, for development, we mostly spent them on developer gatherings. We try to have eight gatherings sure. uh, with well, all the people that mm. get funding for travel and, uh, and lodging and, yeah. and food. And of course, actually, that's a good point. Sorry, not, not want to interrupt you totally. I mean, that's one of the things that we do spend money on regularly. Um, yeah. I've made a point, uh, I mean, I know Ever since I think Martin was in charge, maybe even Bdale, I don't know how far back, we have been spending money on, make, on trying to get our developers together where it makes sense. I mean, we, again, we're not looking to just spend money to send people to go and visit each other because it's fun, you know, for a holiday. But if it really makes sense that we have one of our, one of our teams get together, you know, spend a weekend and just hack on something, whether it's the kernel, whether or not it's the release team getting together, if it's... Uh, the GNOME team, the KDE team, frankly, anyone, sorry? <laughs> yeah, 
Vancouver meeting even. <laughs> you know, if we can get people together and spend money and it will really help the project, absolutely we're going to spend yeah. money on that. And Extra um, has done a lot to fund gatherings like that. They have provided all the infrastructure and just made, yeah. made it happen. But we should have more meetings. They have yes. a limit on the number of meetings and we, we should do mm. more than, on that, mm. than that. And I don't think Debian has been very good at spending money wisely. It's like I've been trying to convince you to waste some money on mm. things I believe is important. And it's like, well, I don't know how much money we do have. And it's like, I don't really, well. <coughs> we really need, need to start using money to get things done. Yeah. $100,000 okay. is not a lot. And I think if we actually spend it all and ask for more, we'll get $300,000. Mm. Uh, and of course, I would really like, like to have something for the DBN EDU project. We <coughs> basically wasted all the money we got and need more now. <laughs> So, uh, and we will probably spend 100,000 Norwegian, that is 10,000 euros a year on developer mm. gatherings. Cool. And we just, we got half of it at the moment, so we need to get more of that. But still, um, we shouldn't be afraid of wasting money on the KDE project or the GNOME project or the GNASH mm. project or the, all. there are all these upstream projects that are very important to us. If the HPUX GCC guys need to get together, we should just fund a gathering for them or whatever strange architecture that we care enough about to actually mm. try to improve. Uh, there is so much we could use those money for if we actually started actively to spend them. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. Right, I think Zach has something. Ah, yeah, oh. regarding the <laughs> external. Sorry. Ah, sorry. Uh, do you want to right, go ahead? Um, just a question from uh, Javier on IC. Uh, could you someone ask Steve if it would be possible to pay professional technical writers to write our user or administrator's manual since we haven't had an official one for years? No one's working on this documentation, so paying a company to do, to do this would not be dunk tank revisited. Mm. Yes, possible. Um, if somebody wants to get an idea of, uh, put together a proposal with an idea of how much it'll cost and what we should expect from it, Yes, sounds entirely sensible. I know he did send me an email about this. I was going to come on to some more of the suggestions I've had. Um, but fine, he's, he's interrupted already. Um, Zach? So regarding the Extremadura kind of meeting, yeah. uh, I've been a regular of uh, the QA meeting that was, was sponsored by them. I completely agree we should uh, use money to make things like that happen. The difference is that they are actively advertising them. So they mm. sent us an uh, announcement or get in touch with the people in single teams to propose, hey, do you want yeah. to meet? And we, as, D as Debian, have mm. never done anything like that. So if you really want to push in that direction, you should either send us an announcement or mm. contact single teams periodically and say, okay, do you, do you want to like to meet this mm. year again? If yes, Debian should use, have money for you. Yeah, cool. I should note, Andy at the front did volunteer to take notes on all of this. Um, I will push out a summary of what we've come up with, the ideas from the meeting later. So if you think you had a really great idea and you told me and I haven't mentioned it back, shout at me and tell me, uh, you know, we don't want to lose any of the ideas, no matter how wacky they might sound. I mean, we haven't had any wacky ones yet, which is boring, come on. <laughs> That's better. Sorry. At the back. Um, I have an idea uh, about travel sponsorship for... Uh, people in the new maintainer queue or new Debian maintainer. Okay. I think we should encourage them to join the Debian conference because maybe they're uh, st uh, already Debian developer or maybe they are in the queue and passed all their tasks and skills, but they are not sure, is it important for me to, to go to a Debian mm. conference? So I think it would be very nice to encourage them if they like to come to apply for it and maybe to give them with a higher priority travel sponsorship. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very good point. I know we had one of our new Debian developers actually had applied for sponsorship, then at the last moment bailed out saying, I'm not important enough, I don't think Debian should spend money to get me here. Please, God, no, we really want to get anyone who thinks that they would like to be at DebConf, they can make any co technical contribution, we want to try and get them here. You know, especially for students or you know people from South America who don't have the money to be able to do that to do that kind of travel. Yeah, if we've got the money, yeah, we'll sure as hell we'll spend it. Just to eat. next, Buxy. Uh, before uh, thinking of giving money to other projects, uh, 
I think we need to uh, look at ways to we can be more efficient in our work. But I have one case, well, most Debian developers uh, mm, engage lots of time just to keep up with what's happening in the mm -hmm. community. I know at least for me, I, I read uh, one to two hours mail IRC per day. And I know it's the same for others. Uh, mm. uh, Lars Vezinus recently commented. And it's not going to be better for me since I'm going to be a father. And uh, well, one of the things that is really needed to make that better is uh, getting the Debian Weekly News going on in a regular basis and not uh, as we have since two years. Mm. And even going further, uh, we sh most probably would benefit from uh, regular summaries from our main mailing list. Because that way people can mm. keep up without being, uh, f without having to read everything. And well, for those who, who were to in Martin's craft uh, talks, he, he clearly explained that uh, projects like kernel traffic did that for a long time. But well, mm. it's exhausting. It's an exhausting mm. task. Uh, not many volunteers are ready to do that. So maybe it's an idea to use our money to get those summary to get regularly mm. uh, Debian Weekly News down. Um, yeah, that sounds like a possibility. Uh, the, the question is what would be the conditions for this to be acceptable for most of Debian mm. developers? I know what, uh, Tom, I was looking interested at the back, but do you have a comment? Uh, sorry, I just heard Debian Project News, but Actually, it was buzzy <laughs> elsewhere. Uh, would you mind repeating what you said? <laughs> There's a, a quick suggestion that it, 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 that it might be worthwhile spending some money to, to hire somebody, you know, a, a contract, whatever, to just help out doing a lot of the summarizing, doing a lot of the keeping up with the Debian project news that, frankly, is very, very difficult and you know, let's be honest, de demoralizing for, an, for a volunteer to do, you know, every day, every week. Um, I mean, I think it's a reasonable idea. Um, I don't know where we'd find somebody to do it and how much it would cost. Again, if anyone has any ideas on that front, if you could do some investigations, please, proposals with uh, some meat on them, you know, with some, some real ideas like that. Yeah, great, go for it. Where is it? Oh, well, sorry, Petra again. <laughs> I think we should be very careful about uh, paying people to do things that are already done in Debian. I think we should, mm. if we're actually going to fund people, we should make sure we fund things that are not happening in Debian at the moment. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's, this is where, uh, uh, I mean, my feelings on this, of course, is stuff like trying to keep up with summarizing and whatever, trying to do the weekly news type of thing, of course. Let's be honest, that's something that isn't really happening at the moment. <laughs> But on when that is said, uh, I think it's um, um, I think it's a good idea to actually pay some money to uh, projects outside of Debian that are working on pieces that are important to us if they actually can use those money. There is mm. very few project, projects that actually set up to to take fundings and do work with it. Yeah. The most we can pro probably do for most projects is like developer gatherings, mm. while the Gnash project is actually capable of receiving money, mm. and they. Well, I've said enough about the Gnash problem, I guess. Sure. But I mean, the GCC project, how, how do you fund the GCC project? I don't know. No, no yeah. idea. So I mean, we should limit the <laughs> plans for spending money on things that actually can be spent money on. Mm. We need to know who to actually give it to, and we need, that some, need to see that something is going to happen with the money. And for most, pro for most tasks in Debian, it's not possible to put money on it. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, you did mention Dunk Tank as more as a joke, but I'm not entirely sure it's totally a bad idea, provided it's done well. Um, if we look at the FreeBSD project, they've got their own um, controversy about something similar a few years ago, yeah. where uh, Paul Henning Camp had uh, an idea of rewriting large parts of their kernel, and he did that for about two months, um, and had people pay him because he was a contractor and he would he had no project for those two months. Mm. Um, initially, they had a lot of controversy about that, but then eventually developed a framework where people could suggest things that would then get voted on by their entire community, and if they were accepted, 
then they could also get funding from the FreeBSD Foundation. Um, I think doing it that way would avoid a lot of the con controversy which we had with um, Dunk Tank, which came mainly because mm. it was like decided from up rather than from by the whole community, mm. uh, while still making good use of uh, monies. Um, of course, it would require a good uh, project and it would require people to do to, to make good proposals, but the, the having a vote on that and then allowing mm. everyone to have their say in whether or not it's, it's going to happen um, should make should make that work out, I think. Mm. Okay. Uh, I on. would like to add to what uh, Walter said. Uh, I mean, not that I would uh, like this idea to be implemented in Debian, but uh, to consider the different uh, possibilities. I know the Perl community operates, well, I don't know the details, but they operate in a very strange way. Uh, there are pro <laughs> well, yeah, it's <laughs> Perl. Uh, 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 there are projects which uh, require, well, we, uh, for which there is a grant. Mm. The amount of the grant is to be determined by the sponsors that donate to the grant. And once an amount is reached, the grant is given uh, to the person who deserves it, who will commit mm. the time to do it. I know, well, it, it, it can be flawed on very many levels if done wrong, but uh, they, they seem to be very happy with it. Cool. Are there any other projects out there that we know of who, who do something similar or with their money? Okay, we'll come back to it. But Daniel. So I just wanted to, um, to go back to the comment that we shouldn't be, be trying to put money into things that Debian's already doing, but rather to fund things that we're not. I think actually putting money into things that Debian is already doing is a really good way to free up developer resource to go and do the things that they can't do because they're doing this, this other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, funding something like the, 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 the summarizing process, which does happen to an extent, would mean that we take that workload off developers who could otherwise be fixing RC bugs. What, Fidel? You asked about other projects that, that have mm. funding mechanisms. Um, I know the GPL EDA community has gotten some money, I think through Linux Fund, though I'd have to go and check. And they had a fairly involved community process to generate mm. and prioritize a, a feature wish list for spending the money. And it turns out that there's quite a bit of work that I think is going to end up going into the, the, the printed circuit board schematic mm. capture tool chain to make this something that's easier for more people to be able to use. And you know the the process they used isn't necessarily immediately applicable, but this notion that you engage in a community process to identify the wish list of things that you know could could use some money to be worked on if there were only you know capable developers able to spend mm -hmm. time, get that prioritized, get it sort of bought into by the community, and then sort of work down that list, spending money doing things. It it, it certainly seems like something that you know we ought to be able to do. So the problem with the idea of giving people money on tasks that they are already doing to free up the resources, I'm not too sure if it's really a good plan to do, because why do we now think that, for example, fixing our C-bugs is money worth but not, if committing, uh, but not processing the new queue or the other way around, which is, is every C-bug mm. quite uh, it's the same amount of money needed? Definitely, of course, not. Some are just something like 10 minutes. So how much money do I get from our C-bugs then? This mm. leads to all interesting kinds of conflicts I rather prefer not to have in the project. So making the decision who gets how much money is the most difficult thing on that whole spending of money on current developers. Mm. And Steve had a, was waiting. Exactly how much does a black helicopter cost? Does a what, sorry? <laughs> exactly how much does a black helicopter cost? Maybe you just get rid of the whole problem right there. <laughs> Consi mm -hmm. about this problem that Andreas points out maybe uh, if we find tasks that really nobody enjoys doing uh, we, we could consider it but uh, I agree in general that uh, stuff that really we that concerns really our core stuff and that uh, everybody is supposed to do we should not fund anyone mm. different uh, yeah, somebody you know, need, needs to make the decision though as to yeah, what do we consider to be a core Debian task? What do we consider something that, frankly, we're only doing because we have to? It's 
Yeah. I'm not so sure it's going to be easy to find someone to do the tasks that we don't want to do, even if we pay them for for. Oh, sure. Uh, and and frankly, the whole the whole road we're trying to go down in this discussion by looking for people who may want to discuss, uh, who may to, 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 mm. to spend all their day reading mailing lists about a subject that they're not interested in, just because they're paid for it, I don't think that's going to work. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very, uh, I'm quite sure actually that's not going to work. People don't want to, don't do jobs because just mm. because of the money, they also want to have some fun in it. Mm. And I really don't think we'll be able to find somebody willing to, to do such things. Yeah, maybe. So, true. Yeah. Two events to, put, to be put together, maybe arriving at a proposal. So one idea was by Raphael, which has recently published the French book about Lenny. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, you offered free copy of your books to anybody which fixed the... Was it an RC bug or something like that? Okay. Well, okay. So you had an mm -hmm. idea like this, which worked quite well, I think. Yeah. And the other thing is that one of the biggest problems we have, I think, with respect to the community is attracting new manpower to the project. So someone which is not already related to the project. So an interesting proposal may be from time, to, from time to time, have a time frame like one month in which you send out a call to people. Mm. Okay, if you are not already involved in the project, which might mean not being a DD and not being a DM or something yeah. such, if you fix a bug in this month, we, we, you receive some gifts like a T-shirt, a book or whatever. Mm. It will be relatively not, not, not much expensive it will probably be fun and it is, can be a way to attract new people. Yeah, sounds a cool idea. Like three months from now. Mm. Just five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it, th there's a lot of overlap, of course, from that. I mean, this is where the, the Google Summer Code fits in. Um, I think maybe a little. Um, in a course, you know, th they have. Um, or Google offer some money, we, ha we have to go out and find some projects, we find some students, we pick the white ones, hopefully, so they, they come through. We convince some of them to stay on, I mean, you sat next to one. <laughs> uh, we don't necessarily convince all of them to stay on. Um, apparently, it's quite a problem they have, um, even in the most successful projects, only maybe about a third of the students will stay on at the end of the summer and stay involved with their project. Issue of how we spend Debian money. Okay. The oh yeah, yes, I know. It doesn't solve the issue of how we spend Debian money. Yeah. And it's once per year, and it's mm. it arrives at quite few people because we yes. have less than ten students every year. Sure. Just going back to marketing, the comment was made about having a full page advert in say a national newspaper. That's marketing very much towards users. What about some form of advocacy towards corporates? Um, I know of various people who would love to run Debian in their day job, but there is some piece mm. of the puzzle that is not certified to work with anything other than, say, Red Hat, which yeah. means that they can't run Debian or get it past the bean counters or whatever, and that could be, I mean, one example is Oracle, but it's hardware as well. Um, I, I know whenever I saw HP offering for sale support for Debian, I was gobsmacked that a big company was doing this, and it was great. Mm. And maybe if we had someone who had enough money... <laughs> um, maybe if we had someone, it would have to be their day job. The comment was made about people not being able to talk to journalists mm. and things at night. If you're going to go and talk to large software companies or hardware companies, you have to be able to walk in during the yeah. day and, and talk the talk and whatever. And maybe that might be a more useful way to spend money in marketing mm. than a full-page news ad, which may not yeah. reach the right people. I mean, at that point, it's almost a suggestion, to me anyway, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it's almost going out and finding a salesperson. It is there somebody that we could um, put forward as some sort of Debian ambassador role in, in doing the sort of thing that mm. Noodles is talking about? So. Yeah. So, oh. So, oh, Andy? Of course, there's, there's actually one thing we actually, Debian spends a lot of money every year. Uh, this is this thing here. So. Yeah. We could consider to spend some time of some amount of the money that we have to the Debcom every year, which of course means if we don't get an, uh, more income, the amount that we could spend on Debcom will get smaller and smaller over the years, but that will at least show that not all money sits on our account. Mm. Um, probably not the best idea, but perhaps some that is as, at least doable and we know how to distribute money in, inside of Debconf. Mm. Yeah. Very specifically, can we sponsor better food in future? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Wait, B Dale, did you have? No. <laughs> Hi. Um, there are obviously some uh, um, knowledge, knowledge that Debian developers don't have. Uh, not many of them, of us, um, are doing some management. Uh, communication, communication skills may not be always uh, mm. first priority of uh, each one of us and, and so on, even though we try hard. Um, maybe having some support every now and then from kind of mentors from outside, which could advise uh, team leader, um, can I say team leader? <laughs> uh, DPL or whatever, mm. to solve issue inside their teams. Yeah, sounds like a reasonable plan. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> yeah, talk about um, spending money on um, basically, yeah, mentors, advisors for various people in terms of, yeah, communications or just whatever comes up. Yeah. A communication course for the DPL. <laughs> Meh, if we think it's useful, oh, yeah, we can make it happen. Or release manager. <laughs> no. I mean, for, for my own experience, I mean, I've, be, I've been to some of those courses um, of various companies I've worked for. They're very expensive and not very good. <laughs> you know, I mean, it depends on who you're talking to. If you're surrounded by friends and colleagues who you get on, who hopefully you get on with well already, it's, it's a total waste of money. Peter. Um, one thing that I think would uh, make it easier to get people to propose uh, things to spend money on is to make it more transparent how much money they've actually got. Yes, absolutely. I really love the SBI report that mm. comes in monthly spitting where what the SBI got money for. Uh, mm. FFIS, I've never seen anything like that from them. And the others, I have never seen anything from that either. I think the Debian project accountant, foo, someone, should mm. actually generate a report and put it, yeah. well, I mean, monthly email, something, yeah. specifying the amount of money we actually Course. have around. Yeah, Killer um, was appointed as the Debian auditor, and I know has, last year uh, produ produced a report showing what we had in each of the organizations around the place. I hope that went out public, or did you not see it? No, okay, fine, I'll, I'll, mean, I'll happily push that out. We're probably well overdue for another one as well. So yes, blatantly, we need to, a better idea of what money we have were, absolutely. It should also specify what we actually spent money on for the last period, so people can actually get an idea of what we actually spent. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, what was I going to say? Um, I know from my own activities in Debian UK, and obviously from um, approving spend expenditure from SPI, from FFIS over the last year and a half, uh, the most common things that we cover are reimbursement for people traveling, as we've already mentioned, or reimbursement for people buying bits and pieces of consumables, you know, bit, small bits of hardware, hard disk drives, memory, um, people who end up importing new and interesting hardware and just want, us to ask, want to ask us, can we pay them back the import duty? You know, all those kinds of things are blatantly, it's just a, well, obviously, yes, shipping. where do I sign? Shipping. Yeah, of course, shipping, of course, yeah, is another big one. Um, the last idea I've, I've had suggested, and I think this is actually a very useful one, um, is some new big hardware, ideally, for people who are working on the really big packages where it hurts. Um, I forget exactly who. It wasn't Rene, but somebody did suggest that he should have a really big box for building open office on. Um, he's been... Sorry? <laughs> We don't actually have our own S390 machine, but mm. I guess maybe some, I don't know what the price is secondhand, but if that's reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, well, it, Did, uh, you, you were asking for wild suggestions. I mean. Yeah, yeah, by all means. I have no idea what one costs either. Um, so if there is anybody out there who, is, who feels that they're struggling just physically in terms of resources to do the job they've got and, th and there is money that will help, Hey, shout at me. You know, let me know, and we'll see what we can do. Oh. Tell DSA, oh, tell DSA, of course. Yeah. Oh, we have 
we have just had a very, very large donation of a huge amount of hardware from a company in the Isle of Man um, that we, we, I think it's currently under Mark's and Steve's desks at home. Yeah, so we have a stack of machines ready to, to go out. And again, if, if people will find some of those useful, you know, if you think it would help to just have a nice, a nice big box with lots of CPU, lots of memory, hey, shout for it. Some people even need uh, laptops. We, for example, bought a new laptop for uh, one of the Debian EDU developers because he had been without a laptop. He was one of the most act active ones in the project, and his laptop died in Australia, yeah. stuck there for three months with no laptop, and he only could use the university <laughs> machines. That was ridiculous. He was, mm. We bought one to him, and it was a pain to get it actually shipped there, but uh, that we should do things like that. And one of the boot guys uh, at the boot gathering in London, he convinced mm. Ubuntu to give him one of the uh, test machines so you can actually do boot speed testing, which sure. is what we are supposed to be doing. And he basically didn't have a test machine. And I know it myself. I don't want mm. to do <coughs> continuous rebooting of the machine I actually okay, write on. Yeah. Well, again, if the, that's an co yeah. obvious call. People want, would find it would make a big difference to what they're working on, be it test hardware, be it machines to build with, you know, machines to break up to show that something, you know, to, that something doesn't work. Specifically, if there's hardware out there that is causing us problems and you've got no idea on where to find it from or you know you can't afford it, again, shout, all of these are possible. But it's very, very difficult to know when to do it. <laughs> if it's well known that you can just ask and get a new laptop, I'm yeah. pretty sure we will heap, have heaps of people showing up mm. for a new laptop. We're not just going to sign off on them every day, but if if there's a, if there is a good call for it, really, shout. Another question coming from IRC would be to advertise uh, Debian and DebConf and Open Day uh, about four weeks before DebConf actually starts in the country that is hosting the DebConf mm. to make more people aware of it and bring more public. Presumably. Yes, we should. Um, Coming up to this DebConf, if anything, we were short of resources, not in terms of money or advertising or whatever, just in terms of people to get, to get the advertising out. Um, it's something that hopefully the guys next year are doing a better job of. Yeah, if it costs money, I know we did spend money on some kind of newswire service um, so that we could easily just get lots of press coverage very quickly for DebConf 7. Again, it, actually that kind of thing costs very little. You know, it's just a case of emails or phone calls, faxes, whatever, go out to the journalists. That's an easy thing to do. And for this specific DebConf, there was a uh, centerfold uh, in a free newspaper with information both in English and Spanish. And there was a press conference with the mayor of the city with 15 mm. uh, reporters attending from, mm. from radio, television, and uh, yeah. uh, article newspapers and mm. magazines. And more newspaper articles after yeah. that as well. Cool. Um, actually, g going on for DebConf stuff, one of the things one of the things we have spent quite a lot of money on in the last couple of years is equipment to do things like DebConf. Um, we haven't been buying the video cameras themselves because they're just very expensive. Yes, um, but for stuff like microphones, for mixer desks, whatever, which or should be robust, should last well from conference to conference, and they're not going to go obsolete. Yeah, we've spent money on those already, and we'll be shipping those around. And as BDL points out, yes, the projector in here is awful. We know that. We actually we had agreed to go out and buy one at the end of last week. We just utterly failed to find anywhere local that could get one to us in the time. Any more? Uh, Arthur. Uh, about marketing, uh, shouldn't we be interested in some targeted efforts in universities? Like next month I'll be back to school and uh, mm. people will be wondering, so I've got this new laptop and I'm starting this September in school, what should I install? And uh, I'm constantly battling mountains of Ubuntu disks that were shipped in, in September. I'm even battling against Open Solaris disks, being because Open Solaris actually pays an ambassador. Uh, Sun pays an ambassador yeah. at our school. We have people uh, at Opera paying an ambassador at our school. Of course, there's Microsoft with uh, MSDN AA, sure. and all kind of stuff. I'm not talking about paying an ambassador, which mm. is kind of annoying with the way that this actual ambassador yeah. behave in our school, but. Having 
sending stickers, T-shirts, that oh, kind of absolutely, stuff, yeah. has a very mm. uh, useful impact in university. That's, that's quite an important segment of uh, our users. Mm. And that's also why I have a very hard time recruiting students for this sum of code. They're all running for Ubuntu, mm. and they don't even know what Debian is. Okay. Yeah, good point. Okay. If, yeah, if, if we do have any more, you know, any, any students who, who are going to university and whatever and could, could get us more coverage just by handing out some T-shirts, some stickers, some, some DVDs, whatever, yes, we can do that. It's just a case of obviously finding the people to do it. Wacky ID uh, paid the hardware vendors to make the firmware available with a free license. Yeah. Do you, do you know who to talk to? I have no idea. <laughs> Bedell's shaking his head, unfortunately, at the front. A couple of the wacky ideas have been wonderfully wacky, but um, we're <laughs> off by two orders of magnitude on the amount of money required to impress the likes of, you know, NVIDIA or Broadcom or Oracle or, yeah. you know, hate to be that way. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> Right, I think we're winding down a bit. Do we have, come on, do we have well, anything really have, cool uh, to just spend money on? on. I have an idea. Uh, uh, basically, what I've seen uh, just last week, uh, uh, OpenSUSE has a uh, server s stack that uh, you can upload your application to mm. and uh, get back a, a virtual image with pre-installed your application in it. Um, the, it can compile your application if you have the source. It can produce the virtual images in all different kinds, and it can provide you a, a live boot over the web, over a Flash application, to actually see how it looks uh, when it's booted up. Uh, I think cute. it could be uh, useful to have something like that combined with something uh, similar to Launchpad PPAs, where people that are not Debian developers could upload a package or two mm -hmm have it automatically compiled to all, all architectures and uh, uh, available uh, as a download, very, very separate from the Debian archive. Mm. It could sometimes even replace experimental for some causes. Yeah, maybe. I think we'd, we'd, we'd possibly have a problem though with, you know, we would need the volunteers to do the work. We're not gonna pay people to do that, but the hardware definitely we could spend money on if there were people who wanted it. Yeah. The project has the hardware, it's only missing a location where to put it. There's okay. more than enough CPU power for that. So the main thing needed is volunteers doing the work. Yeah, okay. If anyone wants to volunteer, you know, you know where to do it. Um, I think we're, we're doing a pretty good job for uh, uh, regarding the legal aspect from our own point of view. Um, we are very careful about the license we provide. Uh, from my recent experience, I, I've noticed that uh, f seen from the company's point of view, dealing with license is something which is very different. Uh, and maybe having some lawyers, having a look from the license point of view, and maybe uh, so we could uh, improve our tools and our distribution so uh, the information we publish are um, even more useful for them. Um, Fossology is a good example of uh, kind of stuff the, the companies are interested in. Okay. In fact, on the legal front, um, I have actually been talking to Jimmy at SPI. Is he still around or is he? Oh, he's, he's gone, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we, we actually have a couple of questions open with the, the lawyers at the SFLC and Greg at SBI um, about so, some issues that we want. I know there's some FTP master questions. Um, we, we've got a couple more things queued up in that as well. Um, one again, there's another. There's another. There's more scope here to spend money, maybe to make that happen faster. Um, if people have any really thorny legal questions, um, again, we have money. We can spend it on lawyers if we want. I'll, I'll freely admit, I don't want to spend money on lawyers if we can avoid it. 
you know, we have some pro bono folks, and I'm not a great fan of lawyers in the best of times, apart from the ni really nice pro bono folks. Um, if people think that that will help them if they've got a real problem, again, money is available, we can do it. So uh, one thing that was muted um, a couple of times in the, in the past is paying for card readers or something for each developer to help log on with uh, onto project machines and, and try help the security that way. Um, I know there's certainly some issues to do with accessibility for um, sometimes people who are blind can't necessarily use one-time authentication keys and, and various other bits mm. and pieces, but uh, it was certainly mentioned in the past as something that we may be able to fund. Yeah, there is that as well. In fact, yeah, related, I know Steve's just announced in the last couple of days that he wants to turn off all password login for Debian hosts. It's about time. <laughs> um, I mean, to, to be honest, I mean, I know we talked about the card readers and stuff a while back. These days, that kind of thing, at least to me, I don't know, to me, that kind of thing is really cheap. I can't imagine many people need help, if, but if it, if it is something that people think they would they need help with if they just don't have the money, yeah, of course we can do it. Petu again. Uh, even cheap is too, s too much for some people, so we shouldn't just assume that it's so yeah. cheap that people that actually mm. are paid to do fun things can waste them on anything. It's, at least of some course. of the people I work with, they don't have extra nickels to spend on yeah. funny hardware. Uh, so if we actually wanted well, key cards, whatever, uh, mm. things to be available for all developers, we actually need to spend money on it on the, sure. on the project. Well, I'm curious, quick show of hands, who here thinks it would be a useful thing to spend money on? You know, make sure that all DDs have you know, physical tokens, whatever, for, for doing login to Debian machines. Okay, we all look underwhelmed. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, yeah, easy to lose, as B. Dale says. Yeah, we have five minutes left. Do we have any, f any further points, any further questions? No. Well, yes, it's not exactly a proposal, but I would like every DD to be able to check how monies are spent. Mm. So I'm subscribed to SPI Private. I, there I can see how money gets in, but I don't ex exactly see how money gets out. Okay. Adam, were you waving for a question? No, okay. Um, fine, I guess, in that case, unless there's any more on IFC or any more points here, we should probably wrap up. As I said, I will send out, hopefully, assuming I can read down these notes, I'll send out a summary of what, of what the ideas that have come through today um, in the next week. Um, if you think I've missed anything, if you think I've misread, represented anything, please shout at me. I'm not perfect honest. <laughs> um, equally, of course, if you have any more ideas at all in the future, you know, let us know. Um, we do have the money. We're actively looking for better ways of, and more ways to spend that money to help Debian. So let's do it. Thank you for coming. <laughs>